I see you with the ways, bro. Hey. Oh shit! Hey, I appreciate yeah, it. I appreciate yeah, I it. I appreciate went, it. I just went ag the other day, but I had, you know, <laughs> I had, you know, what I'm saying I had some hair, and I switched it up. You know, I had to to get mm -hmm. grippy with the fade, and you know, okay, the new wave. But I said the other day, I was like, man, I'm just gonna go ag because, right. you know, the spring spring break, you know, all mm -hmm. that. So said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just go ahead and tell us a little bit about you. You know, your age, where you live at. You know, any hobbies that you had before before your accident. Oh, uh, well, I just turned 38 in January. Congrats, congrats. I made it, you know, I made it, almost made, almost making it to 40, you know. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think 40 is like that. Once you're 40, like, you you officially old. Grown. Ah, okay. You, know, you, are, you, you know, you start, you going up. I mean, you going, yeah. well, I yeah. would say up. I know what you mean, I know you what know you mean. What I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Uh, but uh, I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. Ooh, uh, okay. You know, shout out to Selena. I was just about to say the city of Selena. You mm -hmm. know, shout out to you know the Sharks. You know, we uh, I started this record label when I was a kid, when I was like okay. 13, and uh, it's called Shark Town Records. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know, the whole city's on you know on it. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I make music, you know, before this, and I okay. still make music. You know, uh, this was just a minor setback for a major comeback. You know, this is this. Okay. You know, this is just uh, this is this had to happen. You know, this mm -hmm. had to happen in my life. You know, God already mm -hmm. has said it to where, you know, this was gonna happen. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's exactly how I feel too. I mean, I feel like that this needed to happen in order to really kind of sit me down. You know, so. That's what my mama says. My mama says, boy, the Lord had to sit you down because you were going mm -hmm. too fast. Exactly. And I wouldn't even, I would never accept that. I'd be like, man, like, whatever. But, mm -hmm. you know, I've had a lot of time to reflect and I ponder on different things that, that yeah. have happened in my life. I'm sure you too, especially in the hospital. Hell Woo! yeah. In the hospital, like when you were, when we were talking about how, when, you were in the induced coma for three weeks. I was too. And mm -hmm. then when you wake up, you're still in ICU for about at least another two weeks while you're awake. Yep. Yep. I was on the uh, on the uh, breathing machine, and they take out Ooh, you like yep. that. right there, right there. Well, I still well, got the scar. That see, I didn't, I didn't even have, but I got scars, you know, on the side of my chest. Oh, me too, me too, me too. And, me too, me too, me too. I woke up. I woke up right, and I seen somebody, and I started. I grabbed this cup. I was tied up. I grab mm -hmm. this cup. I start banging it on the side of the the rail, and somebody comes in, and uh, it's a nurse. And I grab him by the wrist, and I wouldn't let him go. And he started yelling, and you know, mm. I just, you know, I was freaking out. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I finally let him go, and then I, I I went to sleep, and then I woke up again, and I started telling my mom like this because I couldn't really speak up you know because mm -hmm. when i first woke up it was like i could barely even whisper two three words before we get into that you know like i want to get into the beginning all right what day was your incident uh thanksgiving morning early morning hours uh 2012 2012 okay okay so it's been it, it's going it's going up on 10 years yeah this year this thanksgiving okay me too me too mine's was september 27 2012 so, oh, right before. Yeah, exactly. So mine oh. was coming up. Yeah, mine. So I was in the hospital when when yours happened. I was in the hospital, so I was probably like I was. I think I got discharged like maybe like twenty days later. So man, mm -hmm. so tell us about that day. How was that day going? Did you feel like something was going to happen? Was you having a good day, bad day? Just tell us how I that was day was going. Bad, I was having a bad day, man. But the girl that I was mm. with at the time, the night before, we got into it ugly, man. Mm. And and that night, the night before, I had a. I woke up in the middle of the night, and she grabbed me because I woke up like, you know, like breathing mm -hmm. hard, and she grabbed me. Yeah. And she was like, "What? Are you all right?" And uh, I said, "Yeah, I'm good." I was like, "Man, I had a dream that." Uh, I got into a shootout with somebody and I was like, I had a, mm. a gauge and I was like right here in the hallway. Like they came in and she was like, well, who? And I was like, man, I don't know. Uh, 
a couple of dudes. And I was like, man, that's crazy. But I had, I had, she knows uh, that I had a couple of dreams that came mm-hmm. true. I had, you know, I had a dream that a friend of mine died and then he died. And then another friend, same thing. I had a dream he died and then he died. So mm. when I said that, she was like, I wasn't. I was like, man, you know, whatever. And uh, she's the one that remembered about the dream later on, you know, afterwards. Mm-hmm. But that day, uh, the next day, you know, we woke up and, you know, I knew the following day was going to be Thanksgiving, but I was hungry. I had I had uh, a taste for steak. So I was like, man, let's mm-hmm. go to Texas Roadhouse. And yeah. uh we got into it. We got into it because you know I I used to I used to push you know work and somebody mm-hmm. called me they wanted some but I I wasn't trying to answer it because I was okay. on my way to eat and I wasn't you know okay. I was I was hungry and so she's like who's that that's some chick and I was like man mm-hmm. you've been telling me that all week and every time I call back it's who I say it is I was like today I ain't yeah. having that mm-hmm. and so we got into it we didn't even go to Texas Roadhouse. Uh, we split up. She went, you know, her way. I went my way. Next thing I know, laws were knocking on the door talking mm. about she wanted her stuff. So I gave okay. her her stuff that she had there, including a new phone that I had just bought for her. And I was like, man, she can have it. I ain't going to keep it. And I already had gave mm-hmm. it to her. So I saw that my homeboy I grew up with had just pulled up. So I called him and I was like, man, what's up? You want to sip or what? And he's like, hey, what happened? I seen the laws. I was like, man, this chick's mm-hmm. tripping. And uh, I was like, where are you coming from? And he was like, I just finished coming from Chili's with his, from, you know, from eating with his baby mama. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, that's what I was trying to do. And uh, I was like, well, what's up? I got a bottle. You want to sip? He's like, yeah. So, boom, we start sipping. And okay. normally, when me and my ex girlfriend would get into it, I would just chill. I would just chief and chill mm-hmm. and hit my legs. You know, I really wouldn't go nowhere. But so, but it was, you know, the holiday season. And I mm-hmm. wasn't going to let her uh, do me like that. So yeah. I was going to let her mess up the holidays for me. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to just sip and chill here in the hood. Mm-hmm. And we started sipping and chilling. Well, one of my other neighbors, younger brother, pulled up with his homeboy and they're like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, we got a case. Can we sip with y'all? And uh, we're like, yeah, you know, all right, all right you know, whatever. So, bam, mm-hmm. you know, they pull in the driveway. We're jamming. We're sipping. And uh, it's getting later. It's getting later. It's past midnight. Uh, and he's talking about some dude owed the money. Woo, woo. And I was like, man, well, what's up? Let's go, dog. Like, this fool owes mm-hmm. you money. Like, you know, like, let's go. You know what I mean? Like, because if it was yeah. me, I'm like, man, I'll go. That's how I really yeah. started. Uh, I started as, as you know, somebody owed my cousin or his people money. You know, I might kick your door down or mm-hmm. or if I see you at a store, I might kidnap you and and, mm-hmm. and beat you up and, you know what I'm saying, you know, put you in the hospital or whatever. And that's how I really started when I was younger. And then I started, you know, getting in to the, to the dope game. But okay. so I, you know, I was real quick to be like, "He owes money. Let's go!" Wah, 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 wah. Mm-hmm. So we go, and you know, I, I end up helping them like bring out a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, okay, and then we go back to my block in my hood, and then I was like, "Nah, man, let's go back. Like, you know, forget mm-hmm. that. Let's go back, like, and smash this dude, like." You know, mm-hmm. and they were like, nah, and I was like, nah, let's go. So we go, and uh, this is exclusive, like I told you. You know, I really wasn't yeah. going to say all this, but I ain't worried about the statues because it's been so long, and this dude ain't finna mm-hmm. press no charges on me. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, uh, or the state can't pick it up because it's been too long. You know, it's been, yeah. you know, uh, I'm saying 10 years. Like you said, you know, we talked, you know, before and, mm-hmm. I, and I was kind of iffy because I really didn't want to, like I was mm-hmm. saying, I felt ashamed. I felt ashamed of it. Yeah. And uh, once you said that, you know, it could help other people, that's, it kind of just, you know, turned mm-hmm. on the line. I was like, man, I never really thought about it from that aspect, even though I've mm-hmm. thought about it a million times. That's really where mine and your story really relates because I felt ashamed of my story for so long, you know, and once I finally, you know, got it out there and told people and, you know, not minding doing videos on it and just doing videos on my life, that's what really helped me. 
You know what I mean? It really helped me get past that that funk that I was in, you know? And like I said, you might feel ashamed about it. Look, I felt ashamed of mine too. You know, I still have days where I feel ashamed about it. Sometimes when I tell the story, I feel I still feel ashamed about it. You know what I mean? But trust me, it, look, man, it's it, look, it's nothing to feel ashamed about, my man. Look, you here, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? You still here. Real talk. All right. Yeah, true all right. still, bro. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't really thinking, man. I wasn't thinking, and I normally that's not really something that I normally, you know, I've done. You know, but, you know, at that point in life, normally, you know, I wasn't doing that. So when we went, mm -hmm. uh, I was strapped. I got down and I didn't really okay. care because, like you said, he might have a gun. And I thought, like, man, I don't give a, you know, I, I, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. Like, we'll, 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 blast, we'll blast it out. Like, and uh, we get there and I just walk up, man. And, you know, to be honest, I kick that door in. Bye, what's up? Mm -hmm. And uh, I see the dude sitting out on the couch with him and his girl, and I guess they were getting on it. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, right when that happened, and I saw them, and they got scared, you know, and they looked at me, and and I saw that, and I, that's when I snapped, and I was all like, man, what am I doing? Like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, this like, well, this fool don't even own me. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, man, what? Like, I kind of sobered up. It was weird. Mm -hmm. So I turned around to leave, and that's when I started hearing the gunshots. But it's not him blasting at me. It's mm. a, the dude from the the main house, and I knew that dude. And he, you know, what I'm okay. saying he 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 just like I told you, I'm sure he he blasted me because he just knew he could because I already had my back, you know, my mm -hmm. back facing him. I was leaving. You know what I'm saying? When he started blasting, but I stopped halfway down the driveway because it was so dark. I didn't know where it was coming from. And I kind of mm, crouched down. Okay. I kind of crouched down like, man, hold up. And uh, when I turned and I looked back, that's when, you know, he shot me straight through the window and it hit the first one, hit my chest. Like, I don't, right when I looked down, I seen it hit my chest. And I was mm. like, oh, this fool hit me. So I was like, let me take cover. You know, on the side of this mm -hmm. this this ride, and once I do, like it's over for him. And uh, mm -hmm. cause even though I was hit, you know, I was big and solid, like it didn't even go through mm -hmm. me. It just stayed stuck in my my muscle tissue. What the what the surgeon said, you know, and afterwards, and uh, he just kept blasting. And when I when I turned around and I tried to move forward so I could get on the side of that whip. Mm -hmm. One of them, one of the bullets hit my shoulder and it went in at an angle, you know. It, it didn't ricochet or nothing. It's just when I crouched mm -hmm. down and it's just you know it went in at an angle and I dropped, I fell and just I tried to get up and uh, I couldn't. And one of the dudes that was with me, he was down the the driveway and he was like telling me like, "Come on, like, you know, uh, you know, shout out to him, man. Like I that wasn't even mm -hmm. my homeboy. That was my neighbor's younger brother's homeboy. But he he kept, you know, he didn't leave. He was like, mm -hmm. come on, dog, like on the side of the ride, like, come on, I got you. Like if you could make it, I'll, you know, you know, like mm -hmm. some straight soldier, you know, I know you can mm -hmm. relate. And I told him, like, once I knew I couldn't get up, I was like, just go, bro. Like, yeah. Just go like I'm done. Like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. probably gonna die right here. So, um, I pulled out my phone. I pulled out my phone and I called nine one one. And I said, "Hey, I need an ambulance." And I knew what street I was at because I used to date a girl, but I didn't know mm -hmm. the address. So I was like, "Hey, I'm on this street." I shot myself. I shot myself. And okay. uh, they were like, uh, "Where'd you shoot yourself at?" I said, "In the chest." I shot myself in the chest and. I was like, I can't breathe. I, I said, I'm probably going to, like, I feel like I'm going to faint, like, whatever. And um, mm -hmm. well, I said, send the ambulance. And I hung on, you know, I hung up. And uh, I just basically, man, when I hung up, I couldn't hardly breathe. The dude came over and he was standing over me. I think he might have. Kick me like like old youngster said that they stomped him out. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure, but I think he did because I, I, uh, I didn't feel nothing and it looked like he was going to kick me. I didn't even want to see it because like it was just, I knew. And this was the second time yeah. I've been shot. 
I've been shot before mm-hmm. and I survived and everything uh, when I was gangbanging. Because like I said, I was a gangbanging nightmare, bro. Like mm-hmm. I saw dope and I was gangbanging. And uh, and I've carried a lot of caskets, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I've been to a lot of funerals. And uh, so I was living living it for real like what you see on like what you see on menace to society and boys in the hood and all them you Mm -hmm. know blood in blood i was living that for real and and uh so this was the second time i got blasted and i i kind of the first time kind of helped me keep my composure like i wasn't Mm -hmm. screaming going crazy i didn't even go do that the first time really but uh for some reason i was calm and I knew that I was going to pass out. And so what I ended mm-hmm. up, what I ended up doing was just, I said a little prayer and I basically just said, you know, Lord, forgive me. I accept you as my Lord and mm-hmm. savior. Uh, uh, and I'm ready to come home. Like I, I just held on to that faith. Like this is yeah. it. And it was scary, bro. Like people don't, people don't realize, like people think like, Oh, I guess I like, cause I've been, bla- like I said, I've been blasted, you know, when I was like mm-hmm. 17, 18, in a drive-by or whatever and uh i still was like i don't care i ain't ain't gonna change and this Mm -hmm. and that like i'm gonna smoke these food or whatever uh but then the second time but people don't realize once that first shot rings and you get hit oh reality's gonna set in bro it's gonna set Mm -hmm. in so so fast and and uh a big wave of of a fear is going to come over you once you exactly. know, like, once you know, like, oh man, like, and then you like, I can't breathe. Like, and, and, mm-hmm. and you know, you're going to pass out. Hell yeah. That's how I feel. That's how you feel. Yeah. All you can think of is this is it. And it's scary mm-hmm. if you're by yourself. It like, I, you know, I was, I was, they were there, but I told them to leave. And then like them, I was, that dude was standing like, I didn't have family, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, to comfort me. Like, I'm a, like, it was scary. Like, I, it was yeah. a single split moment, split second where fear was set in so hard that, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, I can't even explain, I can't even find the words for it, you know, and a lot of people exactly. don't realize that. And, I was always ready for either death or the penitentiary. My mom used to tell me, you need to change, you need to change. And I used to be like, man, I don't care. Like, this is me. If yeah. I die, I die. If I go to the penitentiary, I go to the penitentiary, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't expecting, you know, this. And so, so Most I, of us ain't. I died. You know, I died. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, when I woke up, EMS was uh, pumping my chest. One was pumping my chest and doing mm-hmm. compressions. And the other one had like this thing and he was you know, giving me air. Yeah, with the, I, okay, so so is this is is this at the house while you on the ground or are you in the hospital at this moment? No, I'm on the I'm on the ground, but I'm turned over at this oh. point. You know, okay, I, so I woke up. How many times in total did uh, did you get hit? I've been shot five times altogether. Well, well, that night. That how many night, times in three, total was you hit? Three times. Three, three times. So, so do you think it was the last one? Yeah, that well, was the one that. Yeah. The one that went in your shoulder and paralyzed you? Yeah. Okay, so at that very moment, did you feel the bullet like hit you like I wasn't in pain. Like even when the first one in the when the first one went in and I seen mm-hmm. it and I looked down, and I seen it, it didn't hurt me. I, I mm-hmm. promise you on everything, it didn't hurt me. Uh yeah, none of them hurt me. You know, I, mm-hmm. I didn't feel no pain or nothing. What hurt was when I woke up in the hospital, mm, and you okay. know that's when you know pain yeah. starts setting in, and Tr- I like, yeah, oh, trust me, I know, you know that's I know. when. I, but but okay, when I woke up, the uh, there at the scene, the EMS that was com- doing compressions, he kind of mm-hmm. like opened up his eyes, and he and I seen him, and he kind of backed up like, and the other one had to like hit him on a like not hit him but tap him on a sort of like, hey, snap out of it, and. That's when they mm-hmm. slid that board under me and put me on the the stretcher yeah. and took me out and then I I, I was like, uh, where's my phone? And I was trying to call my mom, but mm-hmm. when I when I died on the scene, I seen something. You know, when I died on the scene, what I saw was a light and it's and it's uh it's cliche, man. When I say light, I feel like it's cliche because mm-hmm. uh. 
I used to hear stories and, oh, we've seen the light and blah, 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 and somebody. Mm -hmm. And I would never believe it, but real talk, I seen a light. And what happened was, is a man came. I seen a man. I can't say I seen his face, man. Like, I saw his Mm -hmm. face, but I didn't. I don't know how to explain that. He just put his hand out. I grabbed it, and I stood up, and we walked maybe two or three feet when I stopped. And I said, Hold up. I got to go back. There's something I got to do. I got to go back. I can't go. And That's crazy, bro. Look, that look. I got the chills going through my body right now. Hey, real like, talk, bro. And, and he didn't even say nothing. It was just like a gesture, a look that he gave mm-hmm. me. He just did me like, and the next thing I know, I opened my eyes, and that's when I seen the EMS, and, you know, I had got my phone. I was trying to call my mom. But I couldn't even mm-hmm. remember my passcode to unlock my phone. I couldn't yeah. even like, and so I just left it alone. And I told the EMS dude, I said, "Man, don't let me die, man. Like, don't let mm-hmm. me die." He's like, "You ain't gonna mm-hmm. die, so man, don't let me die." And then the next thing I know, I woke up and uh, ICU, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was tied up, and I had that cup, and I I, I seen a cup, and you know, uh, then I passed out, and then when I woke up again. My mom was in there, and I couldn't really say, I couldn't even do nothing but whisper maybe three words, and then I'd get tired mm-hmm. and pass back out. And so I did my mom, like, and she came, and I, mm-hmm. like, grabbed her to, to for her ear to be right here because I couldn't even speak speak up. But yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure that what I was about to whisper to her, she was going to hear me. So her ear was right here, and I wouldn't let her go. And, uh... I told her, uh, I'm dying. I'm dying. And she was all like, well, mm-hmm. you're in the hospital. Like, you're you're safe. You're good. And I grabbed her, and I was all like, I'm dying. I'm telling you, I'm dying. I know what it feels mm-hmm. to die. You know, you suffocate. And, and you know, that's basically what it is when it's your last breath. Yeah. And, and uh, she said, I, pa- I passed out. So she said that. She freaked out and she didn't know what to do. And she called the nurse and the nurse came and checked the machines. And, mm-hmm. and she said I was good. But my mom had a feeling like, you know, because of what was going on. She said mm-hmm. she walked out of the, the room. And right when she walked out, uh, a doctor walked up and asked her, hey, is everything OK? And my mom said, no, my son, check on my son. He said that he was dying, that he couldn't breathe. Yeah. And then he passed out. So mm-hmm. my mom said that the doctor went in there and he checked and sure enough, my, yeah. my lung collapsed and, uh, Ooh. yeah. And, and, Damn. Uh, and so I basically was dying again. And then, you know, then next mm-hmm. thing I won't know, yeah. I woke up and that's when I was on the breathing machine, but she, she okay. said that she didn't give them the, like, she didn't give them something like the right to like cut me all the way down or like yeah. or do me like the trach or whatever i think she mm-hmm. she w- was telling them like do it a different way or something and mm-hmm. and so i guess that's the way they did it when i woke up and then whenever sh- they were going to take the machine off the breathing machine um yeah. i didn't even know i was on it really because i was just i knew i was just connected with all kinds of tubes and she was all mm-hmm. scared and i told her like i told you i was i was dying and and uh, a few days, you know, went by and then, like you get stabled and every day they want to take a tube out or take something yep. off and, yep. and see how your body reacts. And and when mm-hmm. the day that they were taking me off the breathing machine, my mom, they just walked in and they're like, hey, we'll take, you know, take you off this machine. We're going to mm-hmm. unplug it. And uh, and I was all like, well, like, you know, like, well, is that all right? Or yep. what? Like, what's going to mm-hmm. happen? And my mom just walked up to me and grabbed me and said, looked me dead in my face and said, look here, and this might help a lot of people that might ever go through this with a loved one or them themselves. She told me, it's just like, uh, it's just like the flu, you know, just stay calm. It's just like mm-hmm. the flu and just breathe, just breathe. Yeah. And I just, I trusted her and I was just mm-hmm. breathing. They took me off. And, and later on, she told me that the person next door didn't want to they didn't want to get off of the machine they have been trying to you know say hey, you need to get off the machine and it already had been yeah. like three weeks or something that he didn't want to get off he didn't want to let them he was scared and mm-hmm. they came in and they were like you know you're doing good and you know you let us get you know 
off the machine. Mm-hmm. And like how you were saying in the previous uh, interview with the other guy, how you were saying that when you're in ICU and you hear people, family members screaming and crying mm-hmm. over dead loved ones. And man, yeah. that stuff is scary. Like anybody, like I was it hard, is. hard to the max. Like hard. I used to box too, you know, like I used to mm-hmm. box. I had the same trainer as Rocky Juarez. Uh, y'all can look him up. He he was a, a mm-hmm. silver featherweight champion of the world. We had the same, you know, I could have went, I could have did something with myself, but I chose to gang bang and sell dope, you know, and, and mm-hmm. when you said that my story can help people, that's what I really want too. And mm-hmm. uh, I ended up, I'll let you, you know, ask if you want to ask me any questions before we even move on. That moment that you wake up, you in the hospital. How are you feeling at that moment? Like, what type of emotions is going through your body? Can you feel your legs? You know, how are you feeling at that moment? I felt glad to be. I felt glad to be alive. Uh, okay. I wasn't really in pain until like, I, cause they had me so uh, drugged up on pain medicine. Yeah. I really at that yeah. moment, I really didn't feel, cause I was in it now. But when I finally was like awake, awake okay. and alert. I seen my older sister, mm-hmm. Laura, which she served, like I was telling you, she served mm-hmm. a four-time Iraqi war veteran, Afghanistan and, mm-hmm. and oh, Iraq. Yeah. Uh, I, seen the, I seen her face. And to be honest, she stayed with me from that moment. She stayed with me the whole ride. She never left my mm-hmm. sight. And she was strapped up, worried that, you know, somebody was going to mm-hmm. come in and... She was she was on her military game like she was not, mm-hmm. you know she wasn't going nowhere. She was posted up like a stop sign in my in my uh, ICU room, and the only time she left was when they switched uh, shifts, and then okay. and then like finally when I had a regular room, she was able to shower and all that stuff. And she mm-hmm. went one time with my cousin Pearls, the one I told you that uh, passed away. Mm-hmm. And she brought me a, yeah. a Thanksgiving plate, even though it was already, you know, about yeah. to be Christmas, man. Uh, okay, so the moment that you found out that you was paralyzed, what was that like? How did they end up telling you? They didn't really say. They just said that I might not ever walk again. And okay. and uh, once I was in a regular room upstairs in the middle of the night, it hit me. And mm-hmm. I wanted to know, like, what happened, what exactly yeah. happened, what's going on. And and mm-hmm. they ended up calling in this doctor that was the only doctor they said uh, that was there. But he was in, in the emergency room and he came up with an attitude and he was like, you know what, you and your family. He just came in the room, turned the TV off, didn't even just real disrespectful and was like, you know what? You and your family are just going to have to come together and come to terms. You, you're you never going to walk again. He was all like, I I, uh, mm. I served in the military, and I've seen this type of injury numerous of times uh, uh, from different uh, uh, soldiers, and you're just going to have to face the facts. You're never going to walk. And then I, I looked at him dead in his eyes, and I told him, man, you don't know who my Jesus is. And he said, well, you know what? Once you walk, you come back here. And we'll put you picture on the wall of such and such such. We got a few people. And I wasn't trying to hear all that. I was just like, man, this dude, Mm -hmm. you know, who does he think he is telling me that? He don't know. He don't know who my Jesus is. And uh and that's 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 what what went went on whenever they told me uh that I wasn't gonna walk. That's basically Mm -hmm. uh how did your family take the news? Man, to be honest, they were strong, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, they was probably just happy that she was alive, to be honest. Yeah, they you. were. And and, mm-hmm. and really, I told my sister one day, I told her, you know, in, in the middle of the night we were talking, I was crying. It's like, why are you crying? And I told her, cuz, man, I, I'm sorry for hurting y'all, you know, because I, mm-hmm. saw, I saw the the love, the, the, the love, the, the, how worried they were, how much, how much pain I put them through. And that's what, mm-hmm. that's what hurt me a lot is that I knew yeah. that I, I hurt my family by doing something dumb that I shouldn't have been doing. And, mm-hmm. and that, that was the beginning of my eyes opening up on how, um, uh, I knew that, that, uh, I was going down the wrong path, but even though afterwards mm-hmm. I still didn't change, like 
it was a few years after until I decided to make a change. Okay. Okay, so from the time that you wake up in the hospital to the time that they start getting you in a wheelchair, how long was that? Uh, I didn't get into a wheelchair until, okay, I was in ICU uh, for the induced coma maybe three weeks and then another two weeks mm. while I was awake, and then they finally put me in the regular room. I would say maybe okay. like a week after I was in a regular room, you know, they okay. came in with this uh you know, old school, big old bulky chrome mm-hmm. wheelchair and and yeah, one of them hospital wheelchairs. Yeah, you know, you know it, you know it, you know it. Trust me, I know, and, I know. And uh, I got in, and then they took me to this little therapy room, and I started mm-hmm. uh, hitting that rickshaw. Uh, okay, and then uh, they were telling me like, "Hey, uh." you're going to have to go to a, to an inpatient therapy hospital. And I was like, well, where? Ooh, oh. And, yeah. and, uh, I got family here in Austin. That's, this is where I'm at now in Austin, Texas. And, uh, yeah. that's, this is where my mom and, you know, some of my sisters been here for years. And I used to live here mm-hmm. in the nineties too. And, uh, and so this is where I chose, I chose St. David's and, and I ended mm-hmm. up, you know, doing the inpatient and, it wasn't really like I was telling you before. It wasn't really what I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be more uh, therapy, therapy, but it was just like okay. teach you how to get in the wheelchair, teach you how to, mm-hmm. you know, uh, um, how to. Uh, uh, they teach you like how to uh, look out for pressure sores, or mm-hmm. you know, they teach you a little bit about what how your body's gonna react to this, that. Mm-hmm. They teach you how to cat. And like you were saying on your video that you didn't want to cat. I didn't want to cat either. The first time I did, mm-hmm. I almost fainted because it was it was mental. You know, like how you were saying exactly. it was mental. And it was, it was, they didn't really, it didn't seem like, because th- they said this is what they did and they've been doing it for years. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, they didn't seem to comprehend when I used to tell them like, nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, it, it, it yeah. was... You know, it was just, it was scary, man. I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't face that I actually was going to have to do that, you know, and, and, yeah. and trust me, I know, I know, trust me. I, I could not, I, I really just couldn't picture it. So like, I didn't want to do it. And that just led to other problems that led to other problems, you know? And like, I tell people all the time, you know, you got to do this in order to, to really get your life back in order, you know, you doing these little things like just doing that, it's going to help you be able to, you know, travel, do, you know, do, do other things without worrying about, oh, damn, do I got to use a bathroom or, or damn, I just use the bathroom myself. You got to get that stuff under control so you could go out there and live an independent life, you know, live a life to where you can just have fun and not really have to worry about all the extra stuff that come with, with when you're not Catholic, you know what I mean? It just, you know, just being responsible maturing up too, you know, like you get, you just got to be mature enough to really just get it in your head. All right, but this is, this is how I'm going to have to use the bathroom. All right. And that's really it. Um, For real. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So the time you in the hospital to the time that you start doing physical therapy, occupational therapy, how long did they have you in it before they released you from the hospital? How long was you doing physical Man, therapy think, and occupational therapy? I think, I hit St. David's like at right before New Year's because I did New mm. Year's in the hospital and then I did my birthday okay. in the hospital. And I want to say like in March, okay. March something. But then I ended up going mm-hmm. back. And then I, because I remember my ex girlfriend at the time, she, you know, we were still together. And I remember her mm-hmm. putting up little uh, stickers of rabbits for Easter on the window. And inside, yeah. you know, they would always decorate my room, you know, my mm-hmm. family or her or whatever. And, yeah. and, uh, um, so I went back in there and I was there for a while, but you know, I mm-hmm. was hard headed. I didn't want to like, there'll be yeah, times, I was too. there'll be times where like, they will say like, oh, well today, you know, we're going to teach you about this. And I'll be like, what? Now I got to worry about that too. Like, mm-hmm. like I, like I thought it was just, I wasn't going to be able to walk. 
and yeah. it was it's a yeah. whole it's all this other stuff that you got to adjust to bro yeah like a whole list it's not just a few things. it's like mm-hmm. a whole list yeah and every day they would hit me with something and sometimes you know i was young flamboyant you know i was making music mm-hmm. i had money i have you know this going on and that going on and now i was like i had to worry about this that and there was so much mm-hmm. and i was still trying to adapt to the fact that i ha- I, I can't walk and I'm in a whole yeah. other city, and and it was just overwhelming. So there'd be times where I would just tell them, you know what, don't I? I don't want to be bothered by nobody. Like they would come in, mm-hmm. and I ain't them, man. I ain't finna... And then a week would go by where I would miss a whole week of, you know, learning something. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, when I got out, I wasn't trying to, to. I wasn't trying to hear it, man. I wasn't trying to hear it. Yeah. But I'm at the point that's how, where I live. That's how a lot of us are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just going to say, but I'm now, you know, I, I, I live solo. Like, I've been living solo for years already since I got out. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been living solo for years. Um, that's what's up. But, that's what's up. But there's still- you know what? More, more people need to hear that, though. More people need to hear that because I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people think that, you know, damn, I... I'm in a wheelchair. That means I gotta live with somebody. I gotta depend on somebody. When it, it's really not like that. Nah, you know. Nah, it's okay. Like so like the only thing that's what's really, up. That's what's the up. The only thing really that that uh, uh uh somebody will come and help me with is just like sweep, mop, uh, okay, throw the trash. You know. Okay. Yup. Yeah. Cause okay. Okay. Trash, okay. You know. I, okay. You know, I might tear that bag and it's gonna be everywhere and I ain't gonna chase yep. it. You know, I ain't gonna chase it. Yeah. Nah. I feel you. I feel you. Okay. So. So since you've been in a wheelchair, what do you think has been the biggest obstacle that you face? And not being able to to travel, always worried. We're always mm. like worried, like man, if I go somewhere, what did this happen? What did that happen? That mm-hmm. and maybe uh, not really getting out there like I used to. Like right now here, like okay. right now, what's going on is. Uh, South by Southwest, and okay. I used to live downtown, and it was it was going on all the like right outside of my building because I stayed mm-hmm. I stayed downtown on the river, and if you Google Austin, Texas, like you'll see my building where you know mm. it's part of the skyline. So I would come okay. out through either the front lobby or the back during South by Southwest. One of my neighbors mm-hmm. said one day she came out and somebody was leaning on her car in the parking lot. She walked up to him and it was 50. He was doing a show right there. And then yeah. one day uh, they seen Kevin Gates. And then one day I saw Beyonce and Jay-Z like just right there. Cause it was mm-hmm. happening right there. Uh, okay. But I never really went. Cause I'm like, man, I'm in a wheelchair and look, get out there start going to places. You're going to realize they're going to give you a good ass seat. You feel me? Look, trust me. Look, they got to make sure that the handicap, you know what I mean? Like personnel got a little spot. So you're going to have a good seat. So I suggest you get out there because a lot of the times when I go to concerts or like say I go to a game or something like that, man, we got some really good seats. You feel me? Sometimes you got to pay a little bit more, but I promise you, you're going to have a really good seat. Ain't nothing going to be like blocking your view. You know, there ain't really going to be a whole bunch of people around you because, you know, like they don't want nothing to happen to you, you know, to where you, you know what I mean? Like they get sued or something like that. So Trust me, get back out there. I promise you. Look, you can go to South by Southwest. It's just on you, all right. But I promise you, if you go, you gonna have some, you gonna have some of the best seats in the house with a clear view of the stage, most likely. Dead ass. I need a. Like, I need a. For I need for a go. It's just the, the thing is, is that man, there's so many people, and I gotta push my and be like, hey, move out the way, you know. Uh, but that's what I mean. They gonna make the, look. They gonna have a designated area. Four people in wheelchairs to where you're not really in the middle of the crowd. You, like they they're gonna have a section just for you. Trust me. Look, just get out there. But then it's all about doing research too, calling, making phone calls. You know, like doing little stuff like that, doing like the little groundwork before you get there, so you know what to expect whenever you get there. But trust me, you're gonna have you a, a, a good spot. You know, because I went to man, I went to a couple. You know, what I mean, like concerts that was like in a hole in the wall you feel me but every time i went man they, they had a spot that was it's pretty much like vip you feel me they got a Dang. spot for you where where can't nobody else going to it's just you 
It might be some other people in wheelchairs. It might not be. It might just be you. And shit, man, like you got the whole area to yourself. You got a clear view of the stage, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling, man. Look, get out there. I'm a, get I'm, out I'm there. A, I'd have been. I'm gonna start. What's up? I'm, no, I'm gonna say I'm gonna start like uh tomorrow. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. gonna hit up the chiropractor. I, I already set it okay. up, you know. So tomorrow. That's what's uh, up. And then I'm gonna probably do a uh go somewhere and try to get a massage, you know, to get, okay. get the uh because you know the body gets tight you know mm -hmm. and, yeah it does and so uh i want to loosen up and then you know make my way and and okay pick some because it's been it's been ugly over here like barely now the sun's been out and so i'm like man mm, where, yeah. where do i want to go like what i want to go yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make an excuse to go so i'm like man where me too what, what can me i too. go what, what, i need to get out of here already because i tell my yeah, homies, yeah that's how i've been feeling too i tell my homies back home you know because they'll call and mm -hmm. check on me and uh, I tell them, man, I feel like I'm on lockdown, bro. Like, I feel like I'm locked mm -hmm. up just in a nice yeah. cell. You know, I got in, yeah. I got internet, TV, food, delivery, mm -hmm. sir, all this, you know. I yeah. feel, but I feel, and they'll be like, man, you need to get out there. You need to get out there. And, and mm -hmm. I just haven't. But lately, uh, I've been telling myself I need to. And then when y'all came back on, I was all like, man, mm -hmm. I was all like, man, here we go. Like, yeah. this is my motivation, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm yep. glad that y'all are, you know, y'all are back on, you know? And, and, I appreciate it, my man. Thank uh, you. Posting videos, man, because I watched the, the mm -hmm. last one when I saw y'all go to Columbia. I was like, mm -hmm. how do you do it over there? How do you, how do you? Man, look, I look, like I tell people, I found a way. Well, bro, won't well, nothing over there. Won't well, nothing over there handicapped. The sidewalks weren't even really accessible like that. You know what I mean? Like I literally had to find a way. My people, my boy, my my wife. You know, it's just, bro. Like you just got to find a way, man. You just got to believe. Look, it's a way for me. And you know, like you got to just be willing to put your pride and your ego aside and really ask for help sometimes because most of the time people are more than willing to really help you. You know, and that's something that I never really realized. And that's something, you know, I still have problems with. I still have problems asking people for help. I still I still really have problems putting my ego and my pride aside. You know, but sometimes it gets to a point where, shit, man, look, look, if I'm going to have fun or if I'm going to enjoy this moment, I got to do it. You know, and that's how I look at a lot of things. Sometimes I just got to do it in order to really enjoy myself. And, and, and you've and never... No, I was just going to ask. You've never... uh. When you've been out there, you know, you never had anything bad to where it's like, oh man, where you felt embarrassed. I, man, to be to be honest with you, I would say, whenever I was having problems with Catherine and doing Balcay and I didn't want to, that's when I really had the problems where I felt embarrassed or we had to go home because I had an accident and something like that. But once I got my shit together. And really was like down pat with it, man. I never really had to worry about that. In Columbia, never, not one time did I have to worry about it because I was just so on point with it. You know what I mean? I go calf, you know, like I would always watch what I was drinking. Go calf, you know what I mean? Like when I was supposed I seen to. I did Balcare in the morning. I seen y'all eating. Hell and yeah. I was all like, man, because some of that food was looking good. And I was all like, man, and yep. you drank two or something. It was some kind of shake or something it was a it was something you said man I, I had to drink two of these it was some kind of what was we at what was we at y'all y'all were in a was restaurant we in colombia and and you you ended up okay. getting a second so it was uh, yeah it was you and uh <laughs> yeah it probably and yeah I was, and I was yeah like, it probably was i was like man he ain't even worried about his stomach to the, he, eating something that he hadn't eat like the body ain't used mm -hmm. to and i was all like mm -hmm. man what if you know it messes stomach up, and I was like, man, look at him just not caring, just enjoying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I wonder, uh, I wonder like how he, you know, does his thing or whatever for him to not worry yeah. about it. And then, man, it, it's really just, it's really just be, just really being aware, man, and knowing my body, and you know, just trial and error. Like I tell people all the time, you just, you really got to figure out what works for you. And that's what I did, man. When it came to bowel care, I had to pick a time that really worked for me. So now it's so down pat that, you know, I do it every morning 
or sometimes if I want to switch it up and go every other day, like say I'm about to travel or something like that, and I and I ain't got the time to really do it in the morning, then I just wait till the next day or I'll wait till I get to the destination that I'm going, man. But it's really because I know it's I know my body so well. You know, and that's what I tell people. You you gotta figure out your body, you gotta learn your body, you gotta pay attention, you know, because you know, like little things, like it's gonna tell you, oh, I got a calf. Shit, I got a calf right now. I can feel my stomach a, a little bloated and something like that. Like I can feel it. Like I gotta go calf right now. You want to take? You a, know what I mean? So you want to take a calf? No, 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 bro. No, bro. I'm good. I'm good. No, like I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm straight, but like I know, I know. I right, bet this is when I gotta do it. You know what I mean? But it's because I really know my body so well, and and that's really just what I try to tell people, man. You really gotta take the time out and learn your body because that's gonna help you really live a a real good independent life, you know, and I would say stress-free because you ain't so stressed out on, oh, damn, do I got to pee? Do I got to do this and that? Because you know when you have to, you know, and and, and that's pretty much it, man. So on the time, the schedule, um, got to stick with the schedule. Yeah, exactly, man. You got one thing about one thing about life in a wheelchair, man, you got to be disciplined. Real talk. You got to listen. You got to be disciplined. You look, you got to know when you can eat, when you shouldn't eat. You know, it's not when you can't, it's when you shouldn't. You know what I mean? And, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm guilty of it too. Like, I don't really like to eat anything big after nine o'clock. Sometimes I might, but for the most part, I don't. You know, like, I won't eat no type of steak or anything because my I know my body needs at least, at least 10 to 12 hours to digest it. You know what I mean? Because if not, if I eat something heavy, like a, like some steak or something like that, like 10 o'clock, and I try to do bowel care at my normal time, it ain't going to go well. Not that it's not going to go well, but I'm not really going to be able to do it in, you know what I mean, like I actually use the restroom. Like I'm probably just going to have to wait till the next day, or I should have just did it later on. You know what I mean? It'll so throw you off. that's what I mean by, yeah, exactly. It throws me off. So that's what I mean by you got to be disciplined when it comes to certain things. So I always try to start cooking between, you know, five and six, you know, so that way, you know, the dinner is done between seven, seven thirty, maybe eight at the latest. You know what I mean? So that's what I always look. I always try to be disciplined when it comes to that because I got a schedule to stick to. And that's what I tell everybody, man, you got to get on the schedule. You know, some people, they, they really don't even know when they got a calf. And I'm like, yo, you should, you know what I mean? Like, damn, it's been like four, you know, like shit, like it's been like four and a half, maybe five hours. Like you should, and yeah, hey, you should be like, I right, bet I got a calf. Or when you calf, you should know what time it is so you know the next time you got a cap. You always got to be paying attention to what time it is, too. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just something you got to deal with. Yeah. You know? For real. And and, mm -hmm. and uh, before I was, I was you know, in a wheelchair, I met my ex-girlfriend's cousin. And then when, mm -hmm. then when it happened, because he was in a wheelchair, but he had his wheelchair mm -hmm. all bare buried out, like his backrest that yeah. was all bare buried and his cushion was all okay bare -buried. okay okay and i was like man who is this little dude he's a little balling from the chair he always had like a you know a fine looking woman with on like man ended yeah. up being my my ex-girlfriend's cousin and so i mm -hmm. met him when i wasn't in the chair and then i met him you know like i already knew him afterwards and uh mm -hmm. i asked him like hey bro like how you because he went on a cruise and he was like traveling yep. and with his kids and, mm -hmm. it's, and, possible. and it's possible it's possible i was like uh right now he's locked up though but even okay. when he was locked up when i wasn't in the child i used to always ask because i used to be like man mm -hmm. that dude you know he must have a strong mind for him to be in you know in the penitentiary in a wheelchair mm -hmm. like man and yeah. uh then when he finally got out and I, you know, I spoke to him, I was like, man, I used to always ask about you. And I, but at that point, mm -hmm. I already was in the chair. And uh, I asked him one day, like, hey, bro, like, how you? And he was like, man, mm -hmm. he said, he said, real talk. He said, uh, maybe like nine or ten years of being in it. He just told himself, you mm -hmm. know what? Like, I got to get it together and I got to get on the exactly. schedule. And I got to just exactly. be worry free and just live this life. He was like, I got kids and uh, mm -hmm. he would just, man, he would just, you know, do his thing. And, and I, like he, he was the first one to kind of uh, inspire me mm -hmm. or, or show me that, you know what, I can live a full life. You know, I yep. can. And can. especially like watching your videos, uh, 
I always would think, man, how do I, how, how do I do it to go out of town or travel? Like, if I want to go see mm-hmm. a game or something. And uh, mm-hmm. when I saw you going to Columbia, that was where it really, you know, inspired me, man. Like, you really, mm-hmm. you know, you really inspired me. Even when I saw them taking you off the plane, I said, man, like, check out Kevin. Like, he's making it happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Exactly. Look, but that's what I mean by... You just gotta be willing to put your pride and your ego aside, man. You do like, like, like shit. I don't like getting carried off the plane. I don't like that image of people looking at me getting carried off the plane. You know why? Because everybody looking. You know what I mean? Everybody looking. Everybody watch you. You know. But shit, man. Look, it's only fucking a minute, two minutes of embarrassment, and then after that, shit, I'm about to go turn the fuck up. You That's feel me? I'm about to like be out. Like I'm about to be out here in Colombia. You know what I mean? Yeah, like shit, we out here. Real. You feel me? Yeah. So, so, man, look, it's out, only a uh, minute, two minutes of embarrassment, man. I said, check out Kevin Escobar out there in Colombia. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, man, we, hey, man, look, we had a good time, all right? And I just want you to know that most of the stuff that you was doing before, if not everything that you was doing before you got paralyzed, you can do right now, all right? Look, it don't start, I mean, it don't, it don't stop when you get paralyzed, you know? It's just... Look, you just got to do things a different way. It's a new journey. You know, you just got to figure out how to do things a different way. You know, just like, bro, man, look, man, like like I said, stick to the schedule. All right, figure out what works for you. Stick to it. Once you stick to it, you, look, you're going to want to start traveling. You're going to get curious about things. You know, it's just, bro, you just got to be willing to do it. You know, you stick to that schedule. I promise you, you're going to get out there. You're going to start doing things. Where is your dream destination? Like, where you want to go to? Man, really, I want to go everywhere. But lately, I've mm-hmm. been lately I've been checking out. Because, I'm, I, you know, like I said, I'm from Corpus, the beach and all that. You know, yeah. I'm used to, you know, that I'm a coastal uh, person, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to maybe go to, like, Europe. Go Ooh, to, go me to- too. You know, I want to go to Europe and go on, catch the trains and go to like, mm-hmm. you know, go to like catch a train and go to uh yeah. to Venice and go to Italy Ooh, from you know catch okay. a train from Venice to Italy. And then Ooh, go to- I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You Look, know what I know what you like, mean because I'm trying to catch the train from London to Paris. You feel me? It's, it's, exactly. You, it so it could go from it could go from I think it goes from from Venice from Venice to to uh. I think to from Venice to to Italy, from mm-hmm. Italy to London, or from little, uh, Italy to Paris, and then Paris to London, yeah. something like that. Man, look, mark my words, mark my words. We gonna bring that to the channel. All we, right. Look, you, look, you gonna see me out there in Europe. You feel me? You gonna see me out there in Europe. We definitely bringing that to the channel because that's something I definitely been wanting to do, man. I've really been. I really just have this itch to really get to Paris and like, man, Real just, talk. yeah, man, I, re- I really do, man. Cause once I went to Colombia, it just made me just want to travel that much more. And you know what? Like I've been over there, like I've been to Germany. Um, I've been it's at right Venice and I got to, yeah, I got to go to different places and I, I really didn't get to experience myself the way I want to. Cause I was in the military at the time, you know, but that just made me really just want to get out there and it just opened up my eyes to the world. Then me going to Colombia, just like, man, like, bro, it's so much, it's it's so much more than just the United States out there. You know what I mean? And it's like, bro, I'm just so eager to get to it, man. Like, I can't wait. I know my wife can't wait. So really, man, I just probably just been procrastinating. But trust me, we're gonna get on it. We're gonna bring it to the channel. That's crazy that you said that, you know, me, you know, our trip to Columbia really inspired you because I never really looked at it like that, you know. I didn't like, like I said, I like I told somebody I talked to before, I said, man. I know we had viewers, but I ain't really know we had people watching. You know what I mean? So j- just to hear what you said, you know, it just it lets me know that it's somebody really watching out there. Not you know, so, watching, yeah, we watching. Exactly, you know, exactly, we exactly watching. my man. For real, exactly. We so, uh, just you know, uh, I would read mm-hmm. some of the comments, and they would be like, uh, "Man, where y'all at? We miss y'all and this and that." Mm-hmm. And and me in my mind, I said. Man, I hope nothing bad happened over there in Colombia because it looked like y'all mm-hmm. had got into some kind of quarrel. 
And I was like, man, I hope, you know, I was like, man, nah, this every, man, man, every, man, everything, everything in Columbia, everything in Columbia went smooth, man. Like, we, man, getting there was smooth, leaving there was smooth. It was some shady shit, like with the cops and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, but like our taxi driver took care of it, man. Man, everything was cool, man. It's just that I think COVID was going on at the time. So they really had like a curfew and like, you know, like they just was just on some shady shit, man. Just trying to get money out of people and stuff like that. Like a couple dollars and shit like that. So, they were probably yeah. happy with like yeah. 10, 20 dollars. Bro, no, not, not even that, bro. Like, like fucking like 20,000 pesos, which was like, man, like, man, I don't know, like five dollars, bro. It, like, it, you know what I mean? Like just little stuff like that. They just you wanted I mean? a little something, little yeah, and, a box exactly. of tacos in the, in the morning. Exactly. With exactly, man. Exactly. So, Man, shout out to the people of Columbia. Like I said, for man, real. You do some travel, bro. You could do some traveling, man. You just got to get to it, for real. For real. you could do some traveling, and you know, just you living by yourself, man, is going is going to be an inspiration to so many people out there because there's so many people in wheelchairs out there that really stay with their families or stay with their parents. Nah, I can't. And, and, yeah, I got to have my own domain. I can't. Mm, I feel I you. Can't, you know, I'm. I, I passed that stage, like. You mm-hmm. when 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 you're when if somebody that's watching right now if if they're in that stage I just want to tell them right now that mm-hmm. you gotta just do it and don't yeah. be scared you know you might you might be weary the first night you know mm-hmm. but once you get out of your 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 mom's crib or your dad's crib mm-hmm. or whoever's helping you you know when you get out the hospital. Once you do that and you get into your own domain, the first yeah. thing that's going to come to your mind is like, like I would say like after a week, you're going to be like, mm-hmm. I should have did this a long time ago. Like, what was I thinking? Exactly. You know? exactly. And and you'll be so comfortable. And then you learn. So when I see you, like, for instance, when I see you learn, it gives mm-hmm. me the itch uh, to want to wanna take that chance. The only real mm-hmm. reason why was was because I had what I had told you, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know what we talked about offline, and then mm-hmm. the second thing is I want to experience all that with a loved one. I don't want to just, mm-hmm. you know, because I feel like uh, I want to share. I want to share the experience with somebody, you know. Mm-hmm. And what better to, you know, what person better to share with the, with the loved one, you know, with like you, you got your wife. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, like God got his hand on you for you to yep. even have that, you know. Yeah, and, exactly. and uh let me just tell you, y'all gonna have a boy. Y'all gonna have a little <laughs> Kev. Okay. Y'all gonna have okay. a little Kev and Kev. Just okay. watch. Just watch. Oh, Remember yeah, definitely. This. Everybody, definitely. everybody that's watching this, I'm saying it right now. <laughs> Kevin and Cassie gonna have a little boy. I'm speaking it into existence. Okay. And Man. I'm prophesizing on your life. And I'm not trying to say I'm a prophet, but I'm prophesizing mm-hmm. on you okay. and your wife right now. I'm down Y'all with that. Have little boy. Just watch. Yep. In the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. just watch. I appreciate it, bro. I look, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. For real, for real. I, look, I really appreciate it. Like, shit, man, I had to go get blood today and take a COVID test today because we're going down to San Diego Monday. You know what I mean? So, man, look, trust me, I'm looking forward to it. So, like hey, I said, bro, well, look, I appreciate it. Might as well start buying like the 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 little J's and the little. Excuse me. The oh hell yeah! Outfits, he- you know, oh hell outfits. yeah! Hell yeah! Might as well start doing that now and preparing because mm-hmm. I'm telling you, you know, start buying the 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 Pampers and the Similac. Get yeah. ready, bro. The blessings about to rain down on y'all. Of course, of course, man. So, I bet so. Let me see. You get out the hospital, uh, you know, uh, you're getting your life together. You're living on your own. Is there anything that you want to share with the people out there? Well, I like I said, I used to, mm-hmm. or I still, I make music. So mm-hmm. when I got out the hospital, I, before I got blasted, and I was in the middle of dropping another album because I got like mm-hmm. maybe like 10 albums out. And... Mm-hmm. And uh, I used to go under the name pres- the President Kane, and mm-hmm. and so I got I got music like how I was saying I got music with Project Pat, and I know mm-hmm. he just came out on that Knife Talks with Drake, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, and I got up music too with like I was saying I got music with uh, the Outlaws from Tupac and the Outlaws. Like mm-hmm. I've always wanted to work with them, and I I I did. I was supposed to uh I was supposed to get Hussein Fatal on it, 
But when he was coming back from out of town, he, that's mm-hmm. when he got into that car accident and he passed away and I wasn't able. And he, mm. he was like my, besides Pac, he was my favorite out of the outlaws. But I still got Young Noble mm. and Idi Amin. Shout out to them. They were mm. real good people. Uh, Project Pat, uh, Little Kiki, Little Flip, mm. Little O, uh, South Park okay. Mexican. Selena's brother is real good people because... Right before this happened, uh, I ran into Selena's brother, uh, A.B. Mm-hmm. Quintanilla, and we were supposed to work on something. And I ended okay. up working with uh, with uh, the lead singer of the Cumbia Kings, which is Selena's mm-hmm. brother's band. And so okay. uh, I've worked with a lot of Grammy Award winning artists, a lot of uh, Grammy Award mm-hmm. winning uh, sound engineers and producers, uh, South mm-hmm. Park Mexican uh, Jaime Ortiz, Juan Gotti, uh, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, Okay. and, and the last song that I dropped was, uh, with little Kiki, little O and King mm. Kali out of uh, San Antonio. Shout out to King Kali. Okay. And it came out on my birthday and I was like, let me, you know, and I got online and I was like checking all the, you know, Apple Music and, you know, Spot Around mm-hmm. was all like, you know, another one's out. And, mm-hmm. but when I was listening to it, I didn't feel it no more. Some okay. uh, overwhelming feeling that came over me where I was like, I'm not feeling this no more. And mm-hmm. I, I think that just ma- a little bit of maturity with age came and mm-hmm. I wasn't in my element in the hood, yeah. you know, busting and drinking and partying, but I was still rapping mm-hmm. and I didn't feel comfortable rapping about a lifestyle that I wasn't living no more. And it just Ooh, wasn't flowing out the same. So I started to tell myself, man, maybe it's time for me to change. And, mm-hmm. uh, a, yeah. you know, I, in 2019, that's when I made a change to get closer to, to God. And that's what mm-hmm. I've been doing is been getting closer to Ooh, Jesus. Okay. And I started this thing called, because I and when I was doing gangster music, I had an endorsement deal with Bud Light. I had mm-hmm. uh, I had a, a foundation called Kids Keeping It Real where I was yeah. giving back to the hood for the kids. And, and mm-hmm. But now uh, I started this thing called Soldiers for Christ. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I put out my first uh, Christian single, which is called mm-hmm. Please You, and today it hit Today it hit 250,000 views. So I said, man, a quarter million views what? on my first Christian. Yeah, and I was like, uh, I inspired myself. You know, I was like, man. That's what's up. You know, I was like, man, like, who would have thought, you know, Christian mm-hmm. rap? And my mom would tell me all the time, and I would be like, nah, nah. And uh, there's other artists, like there's another artist from my city, from Corpus, that grew up right down the hood. I mean, right down the street in mm-hmm. a different hood from mine. And uh, his name is Brian T. And if you look him up, man, almost every song of his got millions of views. And and there's mm-hmm. a big, you know, thing like, you know, and so I, I started doing that. And then I started getting messages where I was inspiring mm-hmm. people to change their lives okay. also. And uh, that's what's if, up. That's what's up. Yeah. If anything, you know, that's what I want to let people know. And and mm-hmm. a lot of people be like, man, this dude's in a wheelchair. Like, hey, Jesus ain't real, mm-hmm. and this and that. If Jesus was real, then how come he ain't walking and this and that? Mm-hmm. And you know what? Jesus is real because it ain't about you know, it ain't about walking in the physical. It's about walking in the spiritual. You know, the mm-hmm. spiritual realm. And that's what I do. You know, that's what that's I do. I walk with Jesus every day in the spiritual realm. You know, I'll be talking mm-hmm. to him all day long and 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 that's just walking up. with him, you know, and, and that's where mm-hmm. my strength really came from. A lot of people would be like, Man, uh, how do you do this? Like I got homeboys would be like, Gana, I would have killed myself by now. Like, how you even you know, doing it. And I just be like, Jesus, bro, like Jesus, you start looking at things a whole different way. And if you got yep. strong faith, you could just, you know, you could do anything. My thing yep. was, is that I didn't have the knowledge of what I asked you about. I was like, man, how is he handling, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I like that. That that's my, that was my issue of not 
having anybody in a wheelchair that I could reach out to and say, Hey man, yeah. how does this, this work? How did you do this? And you know, mm -hmm. but now I got Kevin Kev up in here, man. Hell yeah. Hey, hell, hey, look, man, you do, man. And there's so many more people out there, man. Look, you just got to get in touch with them. You got to get in touch with people that's around you that live near you. Like, man, look, I'm telling you, once you get in touch with other people that's in wheelchairs, Y'all can, you know, kick game to each other. They can teach you something that you might not know. You can teach them something that they might not know. So it's all about networking and just really just getting out there. Like I said, sometimes you like me, I don't really like talking to too many people. You know what I mean? But me doing YouTube, I was able to network and, you know, get out of my comfort zone. You know, it's all about getting out your comfort zone and getting out there and networking, man. And that's where you're going to learn a lot of the stuff that you need to like that's how I learned a lot of the stuff I need to. I had to network and get out of my comfort zone and do it. But like I said, man, I appreciate you coming on here, telling your story. It was very inspirational. People need to hear it. It's somebody out there that's going to hear your story. And I'm telling you, man, they're going to change what they're doing in their life all because they heard your story. And I, like I said, I really appreciate you coming on here, sharing your story, man. Thank you. Like a lot. Oh, thank I you. To hear thank it. you, man. I'm humbled. Hear, man. I'm humbled and I'm, I'm grateful mm -hmm. that you gave me the opportunity to come mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I do want to do one last thing before we go. What's good? What's good I with it? Pray, What's good I want to pray over you and Cassie. Okay. You know, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, nah, you good. You good. Uh, I just want to, you know, I just want to, uh, everybody that's watching, you know, by faith, if y'all could just put y'all's mm -hmm. hand on the screen and let's pray for Kevin and Cassie for their young okay. son that they're about to have. And, and I just okay. want to, I just want to pray that, that, uh, your son comes into this world strong and healthy. Mm -hmm. And, and I just want to, uh, pray that you and Cassie have a strong and healthy relationship and that your journey you. in your podcast, your journey in your YouTube goes far. And I, and I pray mm -hmm. father God that everybody that's watching will, will be inspired by Kevin and his wife. I, I pray mm -hmm. that their young son comes out to be a Dallas Cowboy quarterback and takes us all the way to the Super Bowl. <laughs> no, I, no, no, okay. in, in no, I pay, I pay. So in Jesus no, name, can. I pray I that you man. and Cassie have a strong and healthy son to come out Thank and, you. and, Thank and you. really, uh, and, and really just, uh, be an inspiration for me because that's what I want to, you know, in life. So yeah. it's going to happen, bro. It's going to happen. I appreciate uh, it, bro. It's going to happen. Uh, just watch, man. Just watch. It's going to happen. I know. I know. In Jesus' Trust mighty me, name, though. But you got to agree with me. In Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> nah, you Amen. right. You right. You Amen. right. Amen. 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 All right, man. bro. You can't. I appreciate can't. it. I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate don't, it. Don't lose faith, bro. 